So we're back and we want to take a look at what the user experience is like in our OpenStack Horizon dashboard environment. Recall that just a few minutes ago we looked at the administrative panel. Now this time we're going to log in as our demo user, which is our user environment. You'll notice there are far fewer tabs on the left hand pane and that's because there is only a limited amount of access that we've been authorized for within the environment. So as an administrator of the MyCyclingStore.com tenant, now I can go in and I can see what's happening in my own little piece of the environment. Again, I'm taking a look at the general limits and availability of you know what instances I'm allowed to have, how many virtual CPUs, these are all quotas that are assigned as an administrator in order for our tenants to be able to perform what they need to. We can raise and lower those quotas as needed. In fact, you can change them by default and you can change them per tenant. Looking at the instances that we had, we did see that we had our MyCycling web that Jens created in order to start working on that new website. Under our attached volumes, we can actually see that there is a volume attached to it called Cycling Web Vol. Now we'll click in and we'll just take a look at some of the general information. Now again, recall these IDs are going to be everywhere in our environments. They don't mean that much to us as we look at them, but underneath, as these are being shipped in with the API, and when you use the Python clients in the command line, we're going to reference these IDs very often. But luckily, the GUI limits our requirement in order to understand what all these GUIDs are all about. We can generally just look at them by the real name that we show in the descriptive field. It shows that the size of our volume, when it was created, and what the current attachment is. So if we look and it says, what are we attached to? We can see that the MyCycling web server is what we've been attached to and again, it has a certain amount of information about what flavor it is, and thus what RAM size, vCPUs, and disk size. It also shows our current IP address that we have allocated to it, and a few other pieces of information. Again, some of it seems circular because when I look at the instance, it shows me what image it's attached to and what volumes are attached to. But if I were to look at the volumes, it would be the reverse where I would show what instances it's attached to. This back and forth is great, so regardless of which way that you're looking at the client, you're able to see information kind of from end to end in each piece of your instance or your volume environment. You can take a look right online and see what the logs are from when the instance booted. This is handy when you have troubleshooting that you have to do. So say I boot up a server and I can't understand what's going on and it may have a little spinning symbol in here telling me that it couldn't find a DHCP server. There was some network outage that had happened. They can actually attach directly to the console right through the web interface. This is good for being able to run administrative functions directly on the console of the servers. Again, looking at our volume tab, and to show you quickly, this is how easy it is to create a new volume. We're going to call this plural site. And we're going to just make a 7 gig volume. Now you'll notice under volume source there's option to create a brand new empty volume. You can also create one from an image. So in the instance that we wanted to just take a copy of our previous Cirrus image or we've got other custom images out there, we can do that and we can create volumes from images. In this case I'm just going to create a, an empty one here. So it's going to go and work away, and luckily this delivers all of our information through Ajax right in the front end so we can see as it's happening. And now we look, and there's our plural site volume, and we have a couple of options we have. We can either create a snapshot of it, or we can delete it, or let's just say that we wanted to go and we're going to help Jens out because we want to attach the plural site volume because maybe we want to teach Jens something about OpenStack. So we're going to put some really cool data in there. And we just have to give it a device. And then it's going to attach itself 
work away in the background, and then just like magic, it's now attached to the MyCycling Web instance. So looking at this now, you can see our volumes attached at the very bottom shows two attached volumes. Under images and snapshots, this is where we can manage if we wanted to take current images or we wanted to take volume snapshots and then use them to be able to boot from down the road. And then we have our general access and security, which is where we store our key pairs. This is important. You're going to understand a little bit more about SSH key pairs as you go down the road with further deep dive technical courses. Our floating IP addresses that are available, which in this case we don't have any because we're bridging directly into the front end. And we talked about the API. Now you'll notice that in this case, the API is a service endpoint for my tenant. So this is the GUID for my particular tenant. Now when I look at it, it's mycyclingstore.com. But when the system sees it, it is B710, etc, etc. And that's how all of the API calls are going to be made up against this. So if we wanted to initiate an API call through some other service console, like maybe we attach it to ServiceNow, we can just simply use this interface, take this API reference, and then inject it into some of the other actions and orchestration panels we want to use. Now again, this is a very light view because as a consumer of the service, I don't need to see much. That's because I don't really need to do that much. It achieves the exact result that I need to. Much like how Yuri Gagarin got out and back into space, we have just what we need to complete the task, which is to use our OpenStack Cloud to complete our business requirements. So we're going to sign out of there, and then we're going to take a look over at our Ubuntu OpenStack dashboard and see what it native dashboard looks like. We're going to log in as our OpenStack demo user again. Now again, we have no instances running in here, but generally the look and feel is identical. The difference with this one is recall how I said we're running Neutron in this environment. In Jens's MyCyclingStore.com environment, we're actually running Nova networking. So in here, we actually have a GUI view of what these networks look like. So you can take a look at the different routers that are available. If we wanted to create a new router, we could call it public. And it's really just that easy. We want to set a gateway and we would just attach any network that was publicly available to that environment. Now in this case here, we've created some demo and test networks in order to view them. And again, you're going to see these large GUIDs when we talk about anything that we do in the API. It can be done exactly the same as this. So every single portion of an OpenStack cloud can be provisioned and managed through the API using its ID, using its project ID, and then the simple Keystone environment in order to authenticate and authorize you to make those changes. So that, in effect, is what our user experience is going to look like inside our OpenStack cloud. So we're going to sign out and we'll get back to our presentation.